I'm now going to introduce our um, fourth speaker and fourth and last speaker of the morning. So William, or I'm going to introduce the introducer, just like those text and images where we have layers going down. We have that here. So I'm going to introduce William Neer, who's going to introduce Heba Barakat. Good afternoon. My name is William Neer, and I am a senior studying in both VCU's art history and history departments. It is an honor to be in Doha attending the Hamad bin Khalifa Symposium on Islamic Art and Culture and to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Heba Nayel Barakat. Dr. Barakat is the head of the Curatorial Affairs Department at the Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia and will be presenting her paper, The Triumph of the Word, Contemporary Islamic Calligraphy Collections at the Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia. I look forward to hearing her findings using the museum's unique resources and the insight they provide on one of the world's most historic art forms. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Heba Nayel Barakat. Among the compelling questions posed during the brainstorming sessions at the Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia was whether all art produced in the more recent decades that features Arabic calligraphy is considered contemporary Islamic art. At the field, contemporary Islamic art stems from the term Islamic art, which has triggered ambiguous meanings in the scholarly world. The challenge was to attempt to find a suitable criteria developed by renowned museums to understand the contemporary component of this field. Although the Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia is a historical museum featuring artifacts from the first century of Islam up to the 19th century, it was envisioning a modern approach for its 15th anniversary celebration. Thus, our aim of identifying an already established criterion was to guide us when acquiring, curating, displaying, and storing our to-be contemporary Islamic art collection. In a historical museum, acquiring artifacts depend on their availability in the market, yet acquiring contemporary art is totally a new concept for us. They are widely available in the market through direct contact with the artists, field visits, art dealers, internet research, and auction houses. To start, we attempted to give this mission a working title based on the historical uh, definition of Islamic art from the mirage of, Islam, of uh, Islamic art. The definition is artists and calligraphers, Muslims and non-Muslims, living and raised in Muslim lands or raised in a Muslim surrounding culture, producing various art forms with content related to Islam are thus producing contemporary Islamic art. The defi definition was indeed encompassing a wide and challenging range and did not present a starting point in developing a collection. Thus, we decided to conduct a survey to understand the scope of the term contemporary Islamic art. A few decades ago, museums in the United States and Europe have been directing their attention to exhibitions related to contemporary Islamic art, some of which attained a more geographical term for their titles as art from the Arab world or the Middle East, Turkey, or Iran, while others kept faithful to the term, the phrase, contemporary Islamic art. Similarly, in 2011, we have witnessed the change in the Metropolitan Museum's Islamic arts name to the art of the land, the Arab lands, Turkey, Iran, Central Asia, and later South Asia, totally omitting the phrase Islamic art, despite the fact that in promoting the newly renovated galleries, its function was to house the Metropolitan's renowned collection of Islamic art. Creating confusion yet a precedent, the Metropolitan's revamped galleries stretched the time frame of Islamic art as if part of the agenda was to widen the geographical context of Islamic art and push it beyond the 19th century, furnishing the way to include contemporary art. Professor Nasser Rabat, I quote, the curators chose the title to de-emphasize the religious identity associated with the old name, since Islamic art, like any other art, has many non-religious manifestations. But can we totally exclude the Islamic component of this art? 
Analyzing several of the exhibitions of contemporary Islamic art, we are, uh, realized that the most visible binding element was calligraphy, whether placed on a reclining odalisk by Leila Saadi or imprinted as a foot impression uh, from the British Museum, or an eight feet by eight feet acrylic canvas painting featuring the phrase produced by Malaysian artist Hamir Soeib, or Sandu Burick's American Quran show at Copeland de la Roy Gallery in Los Angeles. All these works of art that depend on the visual introduction of calligraphy presents artworks that is called Islamic. Many artists and curators questioned artworks exhibited under the title Islamic art as being more of contemporary rather than Islamic. Reflecting on LA's museum's exhibition, Islamic Art Now, UCLA professor Ali Behdad questions the title of the exhibition by saying, I think the subtitle of this show is actually a more accurate description quote, artists from the Middle East, giving several reasons among which is that these artists are secular and very much westernized. While curator Linda Komorov feels that all artists there are from the world that was initially shaped by Islam, by an Arabic alphabet, but has evolved into something so much more and much more complex than standard views. At that stage, it became clear that the new Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia's contemporary art collection would incline toward calligraphy as calligraphers of today attempts to unfold the infinite qualities of this script. But then we had to ask, what is Islamic calligraphy? Is it the word of God, al-kalima? the letters al-huruf, the meaning al-ma'na, its spirituality al-rawhaniya? Is it calligraphy that elevates artworks and can assign them to a category that is contemporary and Muslim? These four elements in calligraphy thus became our guideline in pursuing and collect collecting our contemporary uh, collection. In conjunction with Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia's 15th anniversary, a selection of contemporary Islamic art was shown to the public for the first time through the contemporary Muslim calligraphy exhibition, Noon Wal Qalam. The exhibition showcased 100 artworks out of 400 works from the Islamic Arts Museum Malaysia developing collection. It aimed to inspire and spark interest, creativity, and innovation. The works of 36 artists from countries that include Japan, China, Malaysia, Iran, Egypt, Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, and Syria are featured, reflecting the diverse tradition of Islamic calligraphic styles. The title of the exhibition formed a challenge is it contemporary calligraphy from the Islamic world? But then China and Japan are not part of the Islamic world. Is it Islamic calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy, Muslim calligraphy? We favor the term contemporary Muslim calligraphy to avi avoid two words that denoted unclear or undesirable implications. The word Islam implying that it's religious or sacred or made for religious purposes, and the term modern as not to delve into the criteria of what is modern. Thus, the word Muslim came to connote that they relate to Muslim countries or by Muslims or that their contents relate to Muslim tradition and legacy. Thus, in this respect, we did not omit non-Muslims, nor did we discriminate against Muslim diaspora abroad. The use of the word Muslim led to a conversation with one of the prominent Arab calligraphers who presented the word Arabic calligraphy instead of, pro of Muslim calligraphy as justifiably earned through the ages. The debate opened up whether it is all Arabic calligraphy or whether the Arabic script used in other language as Farsi, Urdu, or Jawi's alphabet, or even pseudo calligraphy would all fall under Arabic calligraphy. The second component of this title, Noon Wal Qalam, <laughs> uh, 
presents the letter and the word. It was inspired by the first verses of Surat Al-Qalam, 68, yet it's put forward that letter, the noon, the 25th letter of the Arabic alphabet, and the word, the pen. The subtitle presented the letter and the word as forming a visual composition that contributes to the sacred geometry of calligraphy imbued with divine spirituality. Written in black and red against a light ground, this logo, which is created by a very young Egyptian artist from Damietta, create an intricate form combining the traditional with the contemporary in a unique aesthetic composition. Among the 36 artists on display, 33 had received a formal education in calligraphy. Five had achieved an Ijaza certificate from either Egypt or Turkey, while three artists were apprenticed under their parents who were already established calligraphers. All of the 36 artists were holders of a BA or diploma, yet not necessary in fine arts, nor in art-related disciplines. There was a division in the artistic approach to calligraphy. The Iranian artists were more educated in a national university college with a variety of diplomas, yet mostly became members of the Iranian Calligraphy Association. The artists of Egypt, Syria, Tunisia, and the Middle East were graduates of the National University's Department of Fine Arts, where a European-based education curriculum prevails. The collection presented young and emerging artists as well as renowned ones. It, it also incorporated Southeast Asian calligrapher artists and reserved special attention to women calligraphers. All calligraphers, artists from the Middle East give themselves the title Fannan Tashkili or visual artists. The Iranians were mostly termed Iranian contemporary artists, while artists from China and Japan prefer to be called calligraphers. Calligraphy was not the only artwork they produced, nor incorporate in their works. Patchwork, mixed media, photography is also visible in many of the works of these artists. The Ayam's Noon Wal Qalam exhibition presented the diverse tradition of calligraphic script styles, on paper and on canvases, in ink and in oil and acrylic as lauhas focusing on a central design composition and as canvas completely covered by calligraphic paintings featuring tradition, traditional script styles as well as script styles that are liberated from their rigid canons. As we had the opportunity to meet the artists, As we had the opportunity to meet the artists in person and conduct interviews, we recalled Daftari's request to seek the views of the artists themselves as they, as stakeholders, are an important component in understanding the scope of this field. We attempted to interview the guest calligraphers to highlight philosophies and unveil their personal experiences and reflections. As a historical museum, the views of the contemporary calligraphers triggered similarities between them and historical quotes of calligraphers. Thus, key historical manuscripts composed by calligraphers on the art of calligraphy of the 16th and 17th century, reflecting their views and in-depth understanding of the art form, seem to be very relevant. Thus, we we'll briefly present here few quotes of historical calligraphers uh, quotes to compare and contrast their ideologies with today's calligraphers. Examining the four elements of calligraphy, as I've mentioned before, in the Islamic Arts Museum's collection, the first is the word of God, al-kalima. The word refers to the manner in which the divine message has been transmitted to the world. The words of inspiration communicated to Prophet Adam uh, in Surah, second Surah, uh, verse 37, and the command through which God has assessed the devotion of Prophet Ibrahim in, two, in chapter 2 or, the, or surah, the second Surah in 124. Yet it's also to Maryam, the angel delivered the words, 
Ya Maryam, Allah gives thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be Christ Taisa, the son of Maryam, held in honor in this world and the hereafter, and of those nearest to Allah. This is uh, in the third surah, number verse number 45. The word of God, whether it is explicit or implicit, dominated the canvases of the Islamic Arts Museum's collection. But this is an example of the Japanese calligrapher Fuad Hunda, who has actually received his ijazah from Turkish master Ustaz Hassan Chalabi in 2000. He indicates that passage of the Quran is the basis of his work. Hunda combines the traditional script styles with the beauty of the soul of the words, as he called it. He recalls that it took over 1,000 years to perfect each line in order to beautifully write the words of God. It's a universal art that transcends ethnicity or nationality, a rarity among world's calligraphy. In Fuad Hunda's artwork, the circle, pyramid, and celestial composition have triumphed, cover, discovering the words of God in every inch of the universe. Through the waves of the sea, the movements of the stars, the rhythms of the sand dunes, and the abstractness of the straight lines, Hunda has transformed his belief, his deep inner soul, and his understandings of the verses of the Quran into a dialogue with God. Honda, I quote, says, to me, there are various levels of beauty in the letters. One Arabic letter of the alphabet is beautiful by itself. But when it becomes part of a sentence, there is another level of beauty. And then the letter starts to move as if they were living creatures. These are the words of God. From an Iranian master calligrapher, Azra Agigi Bakhshiashi, who came from a family of calligraphers, she recalls that it's the word of God that is the core and is eternal. The artworks of Azra Agigi, titled Call Out to Allah by His Beautiful Names, recalls the rituals performed at the Holy Lands. The Tawaf captures the letters of the Arabic alphabet circumambulating around the word Allah in rhythmic repetitions. Similarly, her depictions of Labbaika in circle, in a circle composition of ascending and descending rows in a vibrant and powerful movement brings us nearer to God. On the screen in yellow are quotes of historical calligraphers, mainly reflecting their views on their calligraphy and the world. From Egypt, calligrapher Isam Abdel Fattah presents the Shahada in square Kufi, a traditional script style. To Abdel Fattah, it's the media. The paper and the pen are the core of Muslim calligraphy. You move away from them, you lose the perfection desired. The word is the code of the lawha, quote unquote, and whether it is embellished by geometric elements or arabesque scrolls or fills the art space completely, it is the word of God that keeps it alive. The second component of our uh, classification is the letter. Each letter of the Arabic alphabet presented on canvas or paper recalls the single letters found at the beginning of certain surahs of the Holy Quran. The detached letters or groups of letters appear at the beginning of 29 surahs. These letters are known as the muqata'at abbreviations or futuhat, the introductory. The exact meaning or significance of these letters remain limitedly deciphered to us today. These mysterious letters have dazzled theologians mystics and calligraphers all through the Islamic civilization until today. They furnish the way for deeper thinking, seeking meanings, yet also appreciating their vis visible properties and aesthetics. According to the artists, it opened up new realm, a meditative state, a mystery. They recalled the hadith of Caliph Abu Bakr 
in every writ, divine writ, kitab, there is an element of mystery. And the mystery of the Quran is indicated in the opening letters of some of these surahs. The Iranian, this is a, a, an, a painting from the Iranian calligrapher Mohsen Dainabi. And this Iranian calligrapher is a master calligrapher, a poet and a Sufi, who excelled, his, whose excellence led him to the highest degree in Tehran. I quote him saying, to me, it calligraphy is almost like music with no sound. He capitalizes on the letter Aleph and, contem and contemplates its curvature and powers. Another artwork is from the artist Feraidun Omidi, an Iranian artist and photographer, who introduces in a series of letters the emphasis of the shifting moods, perception and vision that art can provoke with the power of the letter. These letters stand alone outside the calligraphic sanctuary in which fusion and interplay with one another liberates them from the verses and the languages. This is the artist Ali Riza Mohibbi. Ali Riza Mohibbi has introduced a new form of calligraphy for expressing his vision of divine love. He presented the free-flowing ribbons that would always bring you back to letters that has a divine inspiration, that has the name of God, visible or through inner consciousness. Mohibbi's entangled ribbons in red against dark brown create a new script style, subtle yet with strong impressions. Calligrapher Ibrahim Ulfat, who reflects on his artwork by saying that they are organic forms which are innate. They shape as they develop themselves with, from within, and the fullness of their development is one and the same with the perfection of their outer form. <coughs> Ali Ajali is the founder of the Golgash School of Calligraphy in Iran, characterized by a dense and interlocking play of the Arabic script, a distinctive new style now regularly seen among numerous Arabic, Arab and Iranian calligraphers. The repetition of letters and words in all directions recall the emergence of the script style siyahmash as an art form in the early 17th century Iran. And among our youngest calligraphers is a Malaysian 17-year-old artist, uh, Dia, Ahmed Dia. And Ahmed Dia has just finished his high school uh, studies and starting to think of how his career is going to develop. Yet he capitalizes on the three mystic letters, Alif, Lam, Mim, and also concentrates on the Saad, uh, and dot and their eye-like uh, uh, circles. From Egypt, Samah Ismail, an Egyptian artist calligrapher who studied calligraphy under the master Ustaz uh, prior to attending the Faculty of Fine Arts in Egypt, feels that the Arabic calligraphy are still imprisoned inside the walls of mosques and places of worship, although they have tried to develop Arabic calligraphy through their artistic work. Yet for him, he has been liberated uh, and he can use calligraphy as an art form, understand the property of the letter, its form and character, and takes it a step further. He does not see himself as a calligrapher, but as an artist in the contemporary world. The third component relates to the meaning. Calligraphy chiseled, inlaid, or hammered on artifacts produced in the Muslim world carried and reflecting meanings. And similarly to the early period, contemporary calligraphers used metaphors to convey messages. Thus calligraphy as an ornament always had a message, sometimes clear and other times hidden, legible or pseudo. There is a meaning underlying there. As calligraphy cannot rid itself of the intrinsic power 
of its original function as a transmitter of messages. The importance of the meaning stems out of the Quranic verses that names the Arabic, Arabic language as the language of the Quran, sent down in the tongue of the Arabs to understand its meanings and transmit it to the world. This is calligrapher Munir El Sharani, who received his degree from the Faculty of Fine Arts, Damascus, Syria, and a diploma in traditional calligraphy from a master calligrapher, Badawi El Dirani. El Sharani kept faithful to the rules of traditional calligraphy, yet in the contemporary world, he tries to incorporate messages that he feels that keeps him alive. In his lawhaz, he tries to he tries to to move away from the Quranic verses and hadith and features messages, advices, and wise sayings. His famous work titled La No, he creates a strong impression in Square Kufi script styles of all what he says no to as oppression, discrimination, torture, and imprisonment. He feels that this is his innovative modern approach, and according to El Shaharani, it is the message that makes con it contemporary and modern. Also from this region, Middle East, we see the works of Nija Mahdoui, a Tunisian artist and calligrapher who graduated from the Academia Santa Andrea in Rome in 1967 and received a scholarship to study in Paris. He opened his scope to create designs with pseudo-Arabic that gave the feel of the language. To Mahdoui, the visionary impressions and imagination is not a technical skill learned in school, but rather to my personal belief, to his personal belief, a gift from God. Away from the explicit word to the implicit word, Mahdoui still recognizes the power and supremacy of the word. His art invites viewer to a conversation, yet one that transcends words. From afar, his pseudo Arabic is viewed as streams of words expressed and clear, while from a closer look, not one single word of Arabic can be recognized. He transfers the script style into design elements, recognize the strength of the articulation, dotting and vertosity of the shapes of the letters. He also understood the importance of repetition and the power of the reed pen in creating strong angles and sweeping strokes. The outcome is outstanding composition with hidden messages. The power of the and the magnitude of Arabic pseudo calligraphy in their entirety goes beyond the words. It addresses viewers that may not be familiar with the language, but mostly it addresses a, a large percentage of the world that are illiterate. Thus, their magnitude and impact is imperative. From Saudi Arabia is the, the artist and calligrapher Ola Hijazi. This young Saudi woman who worked in Lebanon and around the Arab world Ola Hijazi's memorable carpets narrate her life story. It is always a story told according, according to Ola, either a story of you, your acquaintances, or a fairy tale. It is the viewer who would look for the story, the meaning, or the message, and sometimes they transfer the painting into amulets or talismanic or of talismanic qualities. Our next artist is Mohammed Bazorgi, an Iranian artist who feels that it is the, the idea of the artist painstaking rights by hand with no technical influences, creating optical illusions that utilizes quantitative analysis. His desire is to create a new language, one that is based on traditional forms, but communicates through abstraction in the modern world. And that takes us to the fourth component, which is spirituality. Scholars from the non-Western world, like Sayyid Hussein Nasr and Wijdan Ali, tends to support the presence of a spiritual aspect that makes Islamic art Islamic. Tedious 
Burkhardt in 1976 also explained that in the world of Islam, this separation of life into a religious sphere and a profane one does not exist. The Quran is both a spiritual and a social law. We speak now of an Islamic world that is still intact, not fractured by European influences of the very world with, which has produced this works of art which we are admiring here. Like Sufis, calligraphers along the years expressed, expressed the spiritual relationship between the produced art and the act of worship. Thus calligraphy in Islamic art possesses what it takes to be an expression of devotion. Umid Azari takes this spirituality a step further and he says, I quote, in Islam spirituality and wisdom are inseparable and they are different aspects of the same reality. The wisdom based on which the Islamic art is fixed is nothing but the intellectual aspect of Islamic spirituality. And according to the medieval Islamic theologian and philosopher Thomas Aquinas, art is nothing without wisdom. But also from the 16th century, Baba Shah from Isfahan classified the components of the art of calligraphy in 12 elements. Among the first few elements were composition, tarkib, pro proportions, nisbat, and strokes, quwwat. But soon he realized that it is not just skill that produces masterpieces. Elevating the calligraphy beyond penmanship, he added three, the following three traits. Principles, usul, followed by purity, where the purity of writing is the purity of the heart, and sha'an, the authority, where, and I quote Baba Shah, when the scribe's pen possesses authority, headless of the pleasures of the world, he turns his heart towards practice, and the luminous sparks of the real beloved's beauty appear in his vision. Thus, it's divine contemplation, total submission to God. God. This is a, an image from also Zainabi, which we have seen before. And this is part of his collection called Sama Collection, where Sama is the Persian word for spiritual whirling dervishes. Ali Reza Kalampur is also an Iranian artist, and, and he understands and capitalizes on the relationship between a rawhaniya and the wahi coming down from God and the dua going from down to up. And this is the relationship in many of his uh, contemporary works. Also from this period, I show Ali Shamshidi, uh, the flock. Ali Shamshidi is the founder of the Shams Art Gallery in Tehran. He was trained in calligraphy at an early age at, at the Kanun Institute in Tehran. Today, an established artist, he looked, at, he looked out for nature, for inspirations. He sued do letters, flap in and out, recreating the rhythmic movement of the birds. Shamshidi invites viewers to contemplate and reach out for meanings hidden in the universe. And from China, we come to Haj Nuruddin Guanjian from Chandong province in China, where he teaches in Zhenjiao Institute for Islamic calligraphy. And he has produced completely different uh, calligraphic style, a style that is a combination between Chinese characters and Arabic calligraphy. And he signs his artworks in two languages, Chinese, Mandarin, and uh, Arabic. This brief overview of the calligraphy collection of the museum reflects the artist calligrapher's intuition and understanding of calligraphy in the contemporary world. This exhibition liberated the artists from rigid canons of the script. And the calligraphers used the word, words infinity, eternity, and legible and inspiring in, in their 
description of their works. The artworks exhibit a dialogue between the form within its canvases and a dialogue that voices itself and leaves profane impressions, yet the artist expressed the need to set the two fields of contemporary Islamic art versus contemporary Islamic calli uh, calligraphy apart, arguing that it's the word, it's calligraphy that stood the test of time. Similar to contemporary calligraphers, calligraphers of the 15th and 16th and 17th century in Persia and the Ottoman Empire sought to liberate, thought to liberate their work from traditional canons to bring forth change in the meaning and form of calligraphy. The emergence of new styles rejected and re rejecting and rejected by the traditional schools parallels to what we see late today in the later 20th century. The 16th century Ottoman Turkey witnessed the emergence of calligrams introducing zoomorphic figures composed during uh, using calligraphy. Words and letters, mirror image, or representing a form in the shape of animals became a new art form. Similarly, in the early 17th century in Persia, Siah Mash moved away from being disposable uh, training sheets to single folios of value. Siah Mash became an art with no canons, spontaneous, spiritual, and of great market value. Mir Ahmed, the master of Siah Mashk, attempted to build his folios out of repetitions of letters, overlapping and upside down. Mir Ahmed, in 1615, similar to Gogash master Ali Ajali in 2015, composes the works in a playful fashion and both signed their names four times, indicating that the artworks could be viewed from all directions. Their form and technique triumph over explicit content. Built through spontaneity and intuition, their art became timeless. The 17th and 18th century search for contemporary and modernity introduced Qobar, dust-like script, and Shahmas, uh, and Shikaste, which, with its irregular and erratic movement, and the short-lived Gulzar, which is full of flowers. Away from their explicit meanings, they became an eternal divine language, navigating with faith and beauty, pushing the boundaries of what they knew as traditional. Eternity was the ultimate goal of both the early and contemporary calligraphers. These works of art are testimonies to the desire of the 21st century calligraphers, as well as the 17th century calligrapher artists, to break away from the traditional canons by improvising and introducing their own understanding of the world. As calligrapher Ehsan explains, Ehsai explains, we create compositions that took look for to the future as well as to the past tradition, as if this is a natural process. So if this is a natural process of the development of calligraphy, then where is the rupture? What happened in the late 19th, 20th century that reflected Islamic art or affected Islamic art and calligraphy? I only give an example from w an interview with the Egyptian calligrapher Samah Ismail, who is a graduate of the Faculty of Fine Arts, Helwan University, and a holder of a traditional certificate on calligraphy. He tells the story of the establishment of the Fine Arts D Department in Egypt as at the advent of the 20th century on syllabuses and teachers from the West, shunning away the art and craft which were prevalent, known in the West as Islamic art, yet in Egypt as traditional craft crafts whenever they did not fit in European understandings of fine art. Eventually, sculpture and painting in, in, uh, integrated the Islamic art elements as geometric patterns and arabesque vegetal scrolls, yet incorporating calligraphy as a form of art was not comprehensible to them. Thus, two separate schools developed, the school of fine art, fine arts sponsored by the royalty elite and the government, and a traditional school of calligraphy. The fine art school was based on a fatwa by Muhammad Abdu, the Grand Mufti of Egypt, who gave drawing and sculpture a legal Islamic acceptance, indicating that, and I quote, I, quote, I think that drawings 
Once it has established that it is not a danger to religion, neither to belief nor practice, is useful. As much as the arts and crafts suffered by this radical change in taste, calligraphy was now separated from applied arts as well. Calligrapher Ilyas Utsi in 1883 indicated, and I quote, there exists now no exhibition place, neither public or private, nor is there anyone any more contests, nor prizes, nor government which safeguards anyone who comes up with an improvement or innovation in this tra trade that would guarantee him a future." Quote. The organs of the state change, the guild system collapsed, and many calligraphers employed by the state were released from their work and accordingly status within the society. In a break between tradition and modernity, calligraphy as an art emerged as a tool in which patrons showed their cultural identity with Islam. Thus, the Khedivi sponsored calligraphy school in Abdin and, and provided them with space to decorate special halls in the royal palaces such as Abdin's palace dining room and El Qubba's palace reception hall. Karigri was not anymore emphasizing national identity. On the contrary, it was playing respect, paying respect to their religious identity. Thus, the advent of the 20th century witnessed a separation between religious identity and national identity. Islamic calligraphy has been an organic body all through, all through, allowing for development and continuation. Today, we call it contemporary and similar to the 17th century Miraimad, to him his work of Siyahmash was indeed modern and contemporary. The 21st century witness a vogue of contemporary Islamic art in which Islamic calligraphy was allowed a huge space to innovate and develop. Calligraphy, rather than any other form, assessed itself as the one that will keep on developing with no limits as an integrated visual impression expression. The, Four component, main components of calligraphy mentioned above is certainly not a museum purchase policy. It is the dissection of calligraphy. Whether the four components must be present in an artwork to group it as contemporary Muslim calligraphy depends on a criterion and a definition of contemporary Muslim calligraphy, let alone contemporary Islamic art, that we anticipate the scholars and academicians and the concerned parties would develop in the near future. In historical museum of art of Islamic art, artifacts are collected, researched, displayed, and included in exhibitions with catalogues furnishing the way for more scholarship. Yet in contemporary Islamic art can be approached from the opposite direction. Scholarship develops first, stemming out of it the rich stemming out of the rich available sources before they go to museums. The scholarship would set a global understanding of this emerging field. And in, in a century or two, it may not be necessary to revisit the name contemporary Islamic art and seek to reconstruct the field. Thank you.